Welcome to the Worst Sports Channel on YouTube, Hot Garbage Sports with me, Coach Ryan D. What'd we tell you? This is going to seven games. Bruins, Islanders, just when the Bruins think they have it in control, you know, by scoring on the first shot of the game and killing them in the first period, Barry Trotz and the New York Islanders settle it all down and the Bruins blow it. <laughs> Bruins' life expectancy can't be longer than 55 based on the amount of heart attacks they give their fans. Stick with us till the end of the video. Let's talk some Bruins Islanders, baby. Roll the intro. Here's If you're liking the content and this is your first time, second time, third time finding us over here at Hot Garbage Sports, think about throwing a subscribe down low. Think about smashing a like. Join us in the comments. Tons of Islanders fans and Bruins fans kicking around here. Two fantastic franchises. Love them both. Little more bias towards the Bruins. Really starting to be sold on the Islanders. Loving me some Josh Bailey songs. Me and Broomy back here got our clean sweep going for the Jets in round one. We'll see the Habs in round two, but maybe we'll see you all in the cup final. Or maybe we won't. Let's find out together by joining. So what happened in this game today? We have been talking about it. And the cards above. I've watched a lot of Bruins hockey in my time. And the Bruins are very good at giving you predictable patterns. No, I'm not yet talking about the Islanders. Don't worry, Islanders fans. I'm not going to take your win away from you. I just got to poop on the Bruins a little bit here. Bruins hockey is marred by one thing. You let teams hang around. You don't close things out when you need to close it out. And you take series way too far. You know, six and seven games when you can end it in four or five. That's Bruins hockey for you. There is absolutely nothing surprising about this if you're a true diehard Boston fan. And if you are, you know about the two pumps. Renny Rancourt. And even he knows that. This is going to seven. Sorry, Bruins fans. Islanders doing what the Islanders do. Sneakily coming back. Sneaky team. Very, very sneaky. They must skate in sneakers. They're so freaking sneaky. Barry Trotz has a fantastic system and has got a full buy-in from his team of fire ants. You mess with one, you get them all. What a fantastic showing of grit and never quit attitude from the Islanders to come back and win this in overtime. Gotta be Fired up if you're an Isles fan right now, right? Well, the scoring opened up with Charlie Coyle on the first shot of the game, making Varlamov look, well, human. And speaking of Varlamov, remember when I told you all last video that Sorokin is fine? Told you, it's just fine. They end up going back to Varlamov, probably be Varlamov's net in the next game because he ends up winning this one. If Sorokin was anything better than fine, it would have been his net. But Jerry, Barry Trotz is a very smart coach, and apparently... Coach Ryan D just understands him. So here we go. Barlamov's net for now. The Bruins fail to capitalize, though, in the first period by scoring more than one goal, even though they outshoot the Islanders horribly. I mean, they come up with 15 shots on net. Varlamov does fantastic things. And Pelik and Polak, the number one pairing for the New York Islanders back end, stand on their head. And they are studs shutting down the perfection line. I get it. McAvoy, I think he's the best defenseman in this series. But Pellick, that guy's a shutdown monster. Adam Pellick is fantastic. I love him. Every time I watch him, I can't talk about him enough. First goal that goes in is a Josh Bailey goal. Oh, hey, Bailey. Who? Ha. I want to know. I don't know. I don't remember that. Oh, yeah. How'd you score that goal? I can't remember what troll you were using. You used to use it to make fun of him, and now you use it to, like, pump him up. Anyways. Not bad for a guy that doesn't watch every Islanders game, right? Fantastic goal by Bailey. Was this a Tuka Rask fault? Maybe, maybe not. It was a really nasty angle. I can't really blame this on Rask, but like, what a Rask thing to happen, right? Like a goal that just comes in from a garbage angle and banks off a stick like <laughs> Tuka Rask. I know this one wasn't his fault, but like ripping on Tuca is the best. Kyle Palmieri ends up getting the second goal and again another. This is another Tuca Rask special. Told you, Rask can steal this series. Rask can blow this series. Was this goal on Rask? Again, I don't think it is, but it's just so comical that the first two goals that end up going in that extend the series that end up making this a seven game series like it's going to be and Boston loses when they should have control. We've seen this story before. I've been on the ride for 10 years. I have so many t-shirts from it. It's just predictable at this point. So Paul Mary, nice goal? Question mark. It's a goal. It's a goal. And then on the power play, Pajot comes in, ends up putting it through 
Got to like when power play goals go in. Pajot has been a monster for the Islanders. Very underrated player. Their three centermen are deep through the middle with Nelson, Pajot, and Barzell. And Beauvillier, well, might just be the star of the Islanders. Okay, no, it's Barzell. But Beauvillier is really hot and fantastic. So no doubt that he ends up getting an assist on this one. And all of a sudden, it's 3-1 Islanders. Like, wait, what? How? Oh, wait, it's Bruins hockey. That makes sense. Don't worry, they'll come back. They always do. Third period, perfection line shows up and does what the perfection line does. Boston loves playing from behind for some reason. They're always calm, they're always cool, and it has to do with their leadership and the man that ends up scoring their second goal, Patrice Bergeron. They never feel like they're out of the game. They never feel like they're out of control. They always feel like they have a chance and they always have a swagger. If you could bottle Connor McGregor's shoulder swagger and put it into a team, it's the Boston Bruins, so. Let's go, Boston Bruins. Let's go, Boston Bruins. Nice goal by Bergeron. Ends up making it 3-2. And then finally, the perfection line on the power play. Brad Marchand drains it. I mean, it's it's Marchand. Again, it's perfection line, perfection line, perfection line featuring McAvoy. You know, guest appearance here and there by him. Tie game going into overtime. I'm going to tell you, I really, really had the Islanders in the overtime the whole way. I don't know why. Like, it's just this weird feeling that Boston is just not going to put away a series early and they're just going to let the Islanders hang around. That was it. And that's exactly what ends up happening with Cody Sezikis draining it for a 4-3 win unassisted. Of course, it's unassisted. Sezikis, I don't know. Nice goal, Ontario boy. Tuka Rast does Tuka Rast things, plays well, but gets some unlucky bounces. Varlamov steals the net. Barry Trotz and the Islanders stay cool, calm, and collected. We get to sing a Josh Bailey song. Well, Boston didn't. Fans were in the stands going nuts. I still fully believe Boston is in control of this series, and they will end up taking it in seven. But you know what? I've been fooled before, Islander fans. This could absolutely be the Islanders in six. Let me know down below in the comments. I can't wait to see who ends up winning this series. Again, I don't have a horse in this race. I just really love watching this series because, frankly, I like both teams really getting behind the Islanders lately. But for now, we're locked into Boston winning this series. This has been Coach Ryan D.